Good morning. It's another day here at Mingo Campground. Today we're, we're gonna actually drive out of the park, drive all the way down to the end of the Keys and back. I thought about staying there, but the campgrounds there are way expensive. If you go towards like the bottom third, it's like a hundred dollars a night. Higher up, it's fifty if they're even available, which they're not. So. I decided I'm gonna just kind of like camp at a Cracker Barrel tonight. This morning I did wake up at 5.30 and go check out the sunrise and it was beautiful. So it's so worth it being up there and it's just the calm waters today. It was perfect with the wind. Last night though, right around sunset, a huge cloud of no seams came in and it was horrible. I was killing him inside the car forever because the wind was from the other side. So we were on the wayward side and that's where all the bugs will collect because it's protected but they were just hovering around the door and every time i open the door a bunch would get in there's just no way around it so i actually just sat in the car forever just afraid to open the door until they were gone and they didn't leave until much later when it got cooler but i'll show you like what happened here there's probably probably like a thousand of them dead in the car right now the weirdest thing happened the front screen turned on it's been broken for a little less than a week but from all the times i went kayaking i thought i banged it or it got wet but the front screen turned on i don't have to get it repaired i guess sweet check out the bottom here they are just filled with no cms they just came in through the gap in my screen and the window and just filled it in and then some are starting to come under, so I smashed every time there's a big grouping before they get a chance to come under. And now it's just tons of them with this light, especially you can see. I mean, there has to be over a thousand. Let's, let's see how bad the wipe's gonna look. First, let's take the screen off. Oh boy, a whole bunch are just falling off. Let's put this down on the, I can't put it down on the ground. We'll put it up here for now. Look at that mess. It's crazy. It's just so many. It's actually insane. I'll get this cleaned up here. I smashed a bunch against the window too. So I gotta wipe it all clean. Thus the wipes. Just open oceans. I guess the Atlantic on the left. As we drive, just this big bridge, and as we go further towards the right, the Gulf of Mexico. Just wide open. Big, long, narrow bridge. Pretty wild. On the left side there, or I guess the uh, southern side, it's like a walking bridge, and people fish off there. It is really far down though. I don't know how they get the fish up. I made a stop at one of the many parking lots just before like a bridge portion. Uh, a lot of them, there were a lot of them, but I wound up just kind of driving by them before I could see the entrance of the parking lot, before I even knew there was a parking lot, but there are parking lots all over. So we're gonna walk just a little bit along this bridge. So this is a key area. This is still part of Marathon. And up ahead is the portion where it's just bridge and nothing else. And they always have little walkway slash bike paths next to it and people fish off it. So let's go take a little walk for a short bit. It looks like on this bridge there's no fishing allowed, but there's a little walkway to the side and you can see underneath it just concrete pylons. It's amazing. They built this in the early 1900s. It's crazy. Look at that boat shoot through. That's why no fishing allowed, I guess. It came further down. There's like a little walkway right next to the water. I'm surprised nobody's fishing off it. It looks pretty deep right off the bat. Lots of seaweed along the sides, but it looks pretty deep. Maybe there's just other places that are better fishing in general, but there's nobody down here for some reason. I guess because all the seaweed.
parked 0.4 miles from the southernmost point. So I'm gonna walk the rest. Oh man, there's always closer parking after you decide. That's okay. Uh, it's only 0.4 and 0.4 back, and it looks like it's available parking. I haven't seen any signs, but let's get to that southernmost point. I keep seeing random chickens just running around. I saw one in a grocery store parking lot. I'm guessing these are owned. There's actually quite a line of people to get pictures with the southernmost sign. There it is right there. For some reason I thought it was at the end of a pier or something, but right in the corner of two big streets. They make you pay for parking on these streets, so I'm glad I paid to park further away. Past here, it's government property. I think it's a naval base. But imagine you have government housing there. <laughs> you have so many tourists there all the time. It'd be cool, but not so cool. One of the piers right by the southernmost point, just walking around. It's 70 degrees, 72 degrees, and the sun is strong, so it's actually quite warm. Even with t shirt and shorts, warm. I don't know if that's quite the southernmost point where we were. I bet that military base is, but it's not open to the public. Turning right here, I'm glad I didn't try to park closer because it is a madhouse right now. It's a Wednesday, but there are just so many people walking around. There's people everywhere. There's cars just driving willy nilly everywhere. It's uh, <laughs> you got... it's uh, bicyclists everywhere. There's people running electric scooters and electric like little carts, and just it's a madhouse. Right now I'm heading to the state park that's at the very western end here. Mostly doing it so I can look around because it's at the very end of the Keys. And it's also, oh, there'll be bathrooms there. I'm mostly doing it because it's the end of the Keys. So I wanna see what it looks like and just kind of walk out to the edge. And also there'll be bathrooms there. And I have a state park pass, might as well go, right? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Right now, it is almost like a little less than a three hour drive to get back to where I'm gonna be sleeping tonight. I'm gonna try to sleep at a Cracker Barrel. It's the easiest thing. There's no other campgrounds that aren't $50 or more before additional fees and taxes. It's actually crazy. All the campgrounds along the Keys are, are, are super overpriced. Even at the ones, the ones at the end, there is a banana car driving by. Um, you get a glimpse. Hmm. I'll be sleeping at a Cracker Barrel. I'm just gonna try to get there late. So I'm just gonna hang out at the state park until they close or whatnot. And then I'll try to go to a restaurant and try to get a Cuban sandwich while I'm here. I think I've had one once in my life. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And I don't know if it's loaded with cheese. I hope not. And I hope it tastes just as good without the cheese. But I'd like to get one in this area because I mean, we're south of Miami, it has to be good Cubans here and I've seen a lot of restaurants I need to at the state park maybe look up what places I can eat and so I'm basically doing that to stall so I can get to Cracker Barrel like around 8 and I woke up at 5 30 today to go watch the sunrise so I think I could fall asleep at 8 no problem and that'll be it for tonight and then tomorrow we're gonna try to find a campsite in a dispersed area um, hopefully there's some available. I'll stay there one night. That's a naval base over there. And I think this is the southernmost point of land. I mean, there's another spot that looks a little lower, but southernmost point. In the United States. Let's walk around the beach, get back to the car, and we'll head back home. Well, Cracker Barrel's home tonight. I actually think this is the southernmost point. I don't know if it's high tide or low tide, but you gotta time it and you can go up there and then run back where the waves come in from both sides. But uh, now I'm gonna head back now. It's a beautiful beach, it's so warm. Bunch of people in the water. I just 
industrialized. This side of the park is the Atlantic Ocean, and the other side of the park is the Gulf of Mexico. It's actually a really nice beach here. It seems to be pretty shallow for a while, and the water's warm. I remember when I was at Navarra Beach, I stood in the water. I could only stay in there for like 15 seconds. It was so cold. But this is actually quite refreshing because it's so warm in the sun. There's a Coast Guard ship way out there. That over there is Fort Zachary Taylor, made in the early 1800s, kind of like Fort Pickens, except it was used through the 1960s, even through the Cuban Missile Crisis, if you can believe it or not. I'm not sure what they housed there. Maybe they had some nuclear missiles there. I don't know. They have those buildings that look a lot like the buildings they had in Everglades, shooting the Nikes. We'll see. Nikes are probably shorter range, so that makes sense. We're just going to take this little hike here. It goes up, and there's like a long pier. We'll see how far we can go, but there's a cruise ship up there, so we're gonna get a glance at the back. It looks like it's as far as we can go. There's a big cruise ship there. There seems to be some kind of military gun there, like not an active one. But there's fences all along here. Ah, it's a military training beach landing area. There's a fence all along here. It looks like we can't go at all. That's as far as we can go. Pity. I think it was a good idea to take this little walk just to kind of stretch out my legs. I've been driving all day. And with this, well, I'll probably get over 10,000 steps today. I don't know how. Yeah, how did I do it? <laughs> I guess I walked to the southernmost point. But on the way back, let's take a detour to the fort itself, actually. Let's read a little bit about it. I'm not going to go into too much detail like Fort Dickens. But just out of curiosity, learn some things. And head back to the car, look up where I'm going to eat tonight, and start driving back. It's 311. Uh, looks like so far, even if I don't stop, I'll get to Cracker Barrel after dark. So that's pretty good because that's the most you can hope for. Get there after dark and try to leave. Go to sleep as early as you can just so you can wake up really early and be gone before. Ideally, my thing is if they're open at a certain time, I like to be awake a little before. Go in, use their facilities and have breakfast and then go. That's the plan. I was hoping to just walk into the fort, but it seems like on this side, there's a moat around the side of the fort, so I can't get to it. I have to walk all the way around and get to it. Can't learn anything about it. So uh, let's walk. Fortunately, it's not too hot. There's good breeze. Really nice day. I mean, I guess that's why there's so many people. I feel sorry for the Eastern Continental tra Trail hikers because there was such a huge line at that Southern Terminus big line. One thing I like to do is buy frozen fruits and I always put it in a Ziploc bag because I learned one time, I learned my lesson. They sometimes will leak because when they're in the freezer they don't leak but if there's a hole in it and everything melts out in your refrigerator it's gonna leak like this. See all the juice on the bottom? I'm glad I put it in the bag because that would have been all over the inside of the fridge and everything in the fridge. So lesson to you. Another reason to do this is to reduce how much power your refrigerator uses because you introduce something ice cold and it kind of keeps the food cool for a while. So if you have a, t a period where you're not getting good solar or something, just uh, buy some frozen food and plop it in there. And as long as you eat it soon after it thaws, it's okay. But put it in a Ziploc bag. I'm tempted to just drink that, but that's I shouldn't drink that because it's touching the outside of the bag. Mango juice is so good though.
I'm here at Cracker Barrel now. I set up my window shades. I got the driver, the front, and I got the passenger. And in the back here, I got the side black facing out. So it's, you know, more stealthy. And on the left, behind the driver's seat, I also have the black side out. If I crack the top a little, if it's bright in here, people can see. If I keep it gapped, that way I can run a fan. And I use that little clip to hang on a hook up there that holds the screen up. And I can run a fan and keep air circulating over the night. But that's pretty much how I'm sleeping. And I'll turn out the light so you can see how much light comes in when, I, when it's dark. There's a little bit in the sides of the front windshield. But overall, not much. It's very dark. I'm just panning towards the back. There's a little on the top of the back. And then of course, behind the driver's seat, there's the gap. So you can see outside. In fact, you could just make out three vans parked there. Actually two vans and a truck. And there's another truck there with a trailer. There's a dog barking in there earlier. There's a lot of people here. That's it for today, folks. So that's my drive down to Key West and back and hitting the southernmost point of the United States. It was pretty fun. It was nice going to that state park where actually it was a little further south. Um, accessible anyway. But now I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm here at Cracker Barrel again. It's actually a good spot to stop after going to Key West if you want to spend tons of money on camp spots down there. And... There are so many people car cars parked here. It's just boggle the mind. There's gotta be over 20 people here that are obviously camping like RVs and vans and things like that. But even the cars I haven't counted, like there's a camper behind me towed by a truck and they have the steps out in the camper and everything. They don't have the slides out or anything, but still that's a ton of space. It's crazy. But all right. Thanks for watching everyone. Y'all take care. Have a good night. And Tomorrow I'm heading to a state park just east of Miami. Hope to, hope to do some kayaking. Hopefully the weather will be good enough. It's the wind that will determine if I do it or not. Alright, y'all have a good night. Thanks. Bye.